Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I have got an awesome game. It is from the NVIDIA Gigabyte Invitational and it is game one of a best of three and it is between EG's Thorzane who is the blue Terran player and Fnatic's Moon who is the red Zerg and wow this is like a pr and, and did I say best of it's a best of five what am I on about it's a best of five game which makes it even more awesome um, and seriously these are two absolutely incredibly good players so what can we expect from these two absolute powerhouses well Thorzane I reckon he's gonna go for something like a one Rax command scent obviously Thorzane is the spoon Terran which means that he slowly eats away at his opponent and plays very very carefully and safely and just does a little bit of damage here and there and is very strategic Moon on the other hand he's gonna go I reckon pretty much standard Zerg play which is where you basically chuck down a 15 hat 16 pull try and get your third relatively quickly get up to 70 plus drones and then go roll your opponent um so this should be really really good of course the map is antigua shipyard which means it is forced cross spawns actually it's the gsl version so that basically just means that they know where each other are that's why this overlord is going straight here if it was the ladder version or anything like that that overlord would actually head to this base um which is just the way you do it so that's a cool little fact for you all to know. Um, okay, what else? Let's let's talk about these two players for a minute. We'll start with Thorzane. Well, firstly, most people will probably know Thorzane most for the fact that he won the DreamHack Open at Stockholm in 2012. It was an awesome moment. Everyone loved it. Um, but before that, I mean, th by the way, there's the 15 hatch coming down. There's actually a gas coming down for Thorzane. That's a bit more surprising. But Thorzane, what else about him? He used to play human in Warcraft 3. Um, and he only played 50 games of Brood War, which is quite surprising. Um, he played Protoss in the beta. Um, but he switched to Terran because he lost every PvP. What about Moon then? Well, Moon, he's won some really big stuff as well. A really top player. Um... And basically, he's just pretty good. I mean, the most notable thing about Moon is he played Night Elf in Warcraft 3, which is pretty awesome. But more importantly, he won the eSports e uh, the eSports Player of the Year award in 2008. Um, and he's also been pro at both Warcraft 3 and StarCraft 2, but is now a complete SC2 player because he is just complete winning. So, we do have the Command Center coming down here for Thorzane, which is... Just as I thought, to be honest, the one Rax Command Center. We'll be interested to see what that gas is used for. Um, it may actually be a factory is what's chucked down because obviously you will see the tech labs cost 25 gas, reactors cost 50, the only thing that costs 100 gas is of course that factory. So I reckon we're going to see this one Rax into Hellions and this is quite a cool building. He's actually building this command center on the high ground just to be a bit more on the safe side. There goes down the factory up on Moon's base where he's getting two queens out. What I'll be really interested to see is whether he gets just one queen per base or whether he goes for multiple queens. Um, so basically three or four on two bases so he can spread that creep quicker. He has that better defense against Hellions because of course on Antigua there's just so much space for Hellions to push in. There's all of this area which basically means having more queens can be helpful in just preventing you losing some drones or anything. But there goes down the reactor so we're definitely seeing reactor Hellions which is a great choice on this map. Absolutely fantastic. So hopefully we'll see this go a bit more awesome as well. Um, so just taking a look at this map what else do we have as really notable features obviously no gold base in the middle the third base quite easy for moon to take because it's not too bad actually as well for Thorzay not too bad because you can spread tanks out really nicely along here and while it's quite a big open area it can also be a little bit difficult to defend it all but these zerglings are going to deny this expansion for a little bit but Thorzane building another one because that's what Thorzane does he just keeps building command centers pretty much endlessly we've got a starport now on its way so we could see some kind of hellion drop which would be super awesome I love that um, so far we've got moon getting okay when I said he might get like I don't know two to four queens he was like no I'm, I'm gonna get six queens I'm just gonna build queens and queens and then I'll be able to some more queens because queens are good units herped up. I mean, they are absolutely fantastic right now. And Moon behind this, of course, is about to go and take his third base. Great timing on that. Really quite an early point. And just look at this creep spread go crazy now. And of course, Hellions, they're not doing anything. I mean, there's just so many queens here. I mean, 
you'd need just a stupid amount of Hellions to deal with that, and the Queens are just kind of nudging their way forward. They're going to do some damage there. Now are they going to get the Hellion? No, they don't quite, but I mean, straight away we've got one Hellion really low on HP there. That is absolutely sick as sick can be. Taking a look back down at Thor Zane's base, what do we have here? Well, still just that third command center morphing into an orbital. He's moved down his natural. That extra orbital will really help with the mule production and also the SCV production, just to allow him to keep up so well with Moon. Because, I mean, once Moon's third base comes up, he's going to have just that great economic position where you can just pump so much stuff. And the Hellions are trying to poke up, but four queens there, they're just like, they're not having any of it. No. Bye bye, Hellions. I mean, there's nothing Thorzane can even do at the moment with regards to these creep tumors, which of course is a massive big problem. But he has only got three on the field, and of course he's gaining a great economic position, getting the double engineering bay, which personally I love that, and has now switched his starport over. So we're gonna see we've got the Banshees coming out already, and Helium Banshee is quite an effective opener, but the spore crawl is already on their way down. And of course that third base about to pop, and with four queens out, that's an awful lot. The only thing missing is of course the lair. Which is only a quarter of a way done. So, but I don't think Cloak is actually out, unless, unless I'm mistaken. I don't think there is Cloak. No. So, to be honest, all those queens are going to have a, a really easy time, especially with the spores at the natural and main. And suddenly we've got that Banshee being like, "Oh crap, this is not going to work as well as I thought." Moon just moving his drones back, trying to be on the safe side. Six Hellions out now. The Baning Nest is also coming down. Thorzane trying to build a massive supply depot wall off. We've got the third orbital still there, and this third orbital. I'll probably stay there for quite a while because it's a big step coming down here to take that, especially during this kind of danger phase. Thorzain getting out a single Viking, and I love that, like passionately love it because see all of these overlords just scattered around everywhere, which gives scouting information and drop detection. Well, straight away I've counted one, two, three, four, five overlords. That's 500 minerals, and five lava and also the risk of supply blocking moon and that's just irritating as hell if that viking comes out and decides to just start shooting them so obviously we've got the third base up here for moon thorzane he's going to be on the money very very soon he's slowly going up he's taking his third and actually expanded down there we do have the infestation pit on its way out here we've got the plus one upgrades no plus one armor yet which is quite surprising thorzane of course is getting those double upgrades which will make a big difference siege modes on its way the first tanks trickling out and that's quite a late siege mode but this overseer is going to spot absolutely everything that's going on and that's a big tell here but just look at this creep spread 10 minutes into the game and just look at it it's going absolutely everywhere right now and that's going to be a pain because creep gives so much in zvt Primarily, it gives that speed advantage, getting you, allowing you better surrounds of tanks and things like that. But secondly, it gives you an early warning. I mean, once the creep starts getting up to about this sort of point across the map, you suddenly have it that, as the Terran player moves across, well, you can just hold down anything and just start massing units. And here we will see an overall picked off supply blocking moon, already showing how useful that Viking is, because this is a considerable supply block now. Um, taking up an awful lot of time you can see the gas and mineral is getting pretty high pathogen clans is about to finish which means we should see infestors on their way more queens are getting produced here but to be honest Thorzane he's just playing it as he does just kind of nice and chilled relaxed the spore crawler at the front here for moon moon at some point has to start thinking about taking a fourth which is not as easy as Zerg players would like on this map. I mean, we'll probably see this fourth get taken down. There we go, it's already on its way. Um, and then these rocks taken out, just because that's the shortest route to defend all the bases. But then drops start becoming crazy good. Any kind of movements, and we do have a big Zergling counter attack coming in. This is absolutely huge, and the supply depots are down. Oh my god, that is going to be absolutely terrible here. Four moon, what is he going to do? Some Zerglings going up into the main, and they do. The wall gets up just in time, but this third base is going to get absolutely decimated right now. And of course, this is forcing Thorzane to pull back all of his units. He's trying to get there in time with those supply depots, but just everything getting completely demolished. If we take a look here, Moon took out 18 SCVs there. That on the work count now takes it to 71 to 56. The Marines will come and clean up. The tanks were left back, and this is going to be just easy pickings here for Moon. And Moon is just going to be absolutely dancing. Now, the fun growth goes down, preventing the Hellions from getting away from those Zerglings. The tanks have all been killed. That basically leaves one tank on the field here for Thorzane and suddenly we've got Moon in an amazing spot. Yes, the supplies are pretty equal but just suddenly 20 Banelings are going to do so much because if you don't have tanks without fire support you have big, big problems. But Thorzane, he's got such great production 
I mean, he's got 48 Marines out, but to be honest, Marines are great unless, of course, you've got Infestor Baneling, because the Infestors lock those Marines in clumps and deal huge damage anyway, and then, of course, the Banelings, they connect and they start killing super quick. So, what is Thorzen going to do? He's probably going to take a very, very defensive position. Has loaded up a double drop, just trying to buy himself time. If this drop goes down, obviously, Thorzen will force all of Moon's army to come back to defend that, or a vast majority of it, because there's not much here. And actually, a double drop... With Stim could do an awful lot of damage down at this third base, especially when you look at the positioning of Moon's army. Moon has secured his fourth though and is getting Hive on the way. And here comes down this massive double drop and a quick reaction of Infestors actually. And that will shut this down hard, especially if the fungal growth goes and there we go. That is going to be chain fungals and two dropships worth of medevacs are going to go down. And you know who that makes sad? Thorzane, because that's a big loss. And I mean, while we do have a drop simultaneously coming down here, again, that is just getting cleaned up. The fungal chain fungals are going to be so irritating. The queens are getting there, but unfortunately not enough investors. Will one medevac go down? No, 6 HP do survive. But if we look at the loss tab, coming out a lot worse here for Thorzane, which is never good. And these Zerglings are going to come down, but the tanks aren't sieged up. Will the siege get down in time? It's going to be really, really close, but no, it doesn't. The Zerglings do get around. The fungal growth wasn't great, though. The Infestor does get a couple more there, but those fungals could have been a bit smoother. So Thorzane getting off a little bit likely there, but he's about 30... 20 now supply behind Moon, and of course Moon, he's getting up Hive Tech. He's suddenly looking to be in such a good spot. He's got his fourth base up, and while we do have some Marines here, they're on all on very, very low health. That medevac only 6 HP, and while some drones are getting killed, I mean, if we look at the workers killed tab, it's still more killed by Moon than Thorzane at the moment. So, going to be really interested to see how this goes. I love the fact that Moon's playing it safe. He's getting the 2-2 upgrades, the Burrow as well. If we see Burrow Banings, that would be awesome, but we live in hope. So far, the Banings are connecting. There's some big hits coming down here. Great control out of Moon. Going to push off those tanks as fast as he can. And quick, a very, very quick and well-timed pickup there. But suddenly, Thorzane is looking to be in a bit of a problem. He's taken his fourth and this center expansion as well. He is dropping down. Has managed to pick out Thorzane's fourth as well. Missed that through all the action. And this is just really, really irritating for Moon to deal with. But he's slowly gathering up a lot of stuff. There comes down the Adrenal Glands and the Ultra Cavern. And... To be honest, this is going to become a nightmare really, really quickly for Thorzane without kind of that high-end tier tech. He doesn't have the 3-3 upgrade yet. When that does come out, though, that's going to help massively. So here we go, a massive Bane collisions here. Some great fun growth. All the medevacs are getting caught up in a single fungal. Chain fungal is going down. If you start taking out medevacs, you start getting a really, really effective and cost-efficient army because those medevacs required to engage cost-effectively. The tank's not sieging because they're already dead. And, well... Moon, I'd say, has pretty much got this now. Thorzane's going to have such a tough spot. Just reinforcements going everywhere. Do you have the fourth base being taken in the center here for Moon? And the supply depot wall doesn't hold. There is a slight gap as one is still down. And now these Zerglings flood in. And to be honest, this is probably going to be game. Everything going down. The Infestors on their way up. And, I mean, even a Reaper being built just try to help things along. And the only advantage is that there isn't much space here. And, of course, there's only a couple of Zerglings in, but some Infested Terrans are getting lobbed over just to choke up any kind of tank damage. A couple of Zerglings there. The Supply Depot is going down, and this natural base of Thorzane, that is going to go. And there is the GG from Thorzane. So that was game one. It was super awesome. I hope you did enjoy it. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. New top-level games up every day. But most importantly, flick to my channel and check out game two of this series. See you there in a second.